Okay, everyone, so if you have missing work, I hope you have made it up because we're gonna be studying makeup. <laughs> this is chapter 24 of the My Lady book, which is facial makeup. And this is one of the most interesting chapters because makeup is something that is very subjective. Uh, technically, you don't have to be a cosmetologist to study facial makeup or do facial makeup. You don't have to be an esthetician to do makeup. You don't have to be a nail tech to do makeup. Heck, you don't even need a college degree to do makeup. You don't even need a high school degree to do makeup. Anyone can do makeup. Makeup is so subjective and there's all kinds of different credentials and titles. Typically two of the most common titles that you'll hear and I use them interchangeably, MUA, which means makeup artist or PMUA means professional makeup artist. So, or permanent makeup artist, it really depends on what the context is. So make sure you're always being aware of that. So know that a makeup artist is someone with um, additional training in makeup. So learn makeup theory, makeup application. They might have to take an exam and they're trained. Um, it's like a few hundred hour course, or I think it's less than that. It depends on the program. I know that the Innovate Academy, they have the mud makeup class, which is a few months and it's really intensive. And they give you like real world experience on how to apply makeup, like, you know, behind the runway for professional events. It's something that requires, um, training, but once you're good at it, you're able to break the rules because there are some rules of makeup, but there is no definitive right or wrong way. And when you're working with makeup, you know, the worst thing that could happen is you just give someone uh, makeup that looks like a clown. Makeup doesn't have the potential to cause serious harm like, you know, hair color does, facial chemicals do, even some nail chemicals. There is still the risk of um, a skin infection if you're not cleaning properly. So a lot of makeup is just, you know, common sense, basic sanitation, making sure you're doing the right thing and doing a good client consultation. If you are interested in doing makeup, you can get your cosmetology degree if you're in a cos program. I mean, your cos license, get your cosmetology license. And then after that, do a makeup artist program and then get additional training in that. One of my favorite makeup artists um, that I've had the pleasure of doing classes with is James Vincent. He is absolutely incredible. If you have not looked up James Vincent, look him up now and follow him on Instagram. Also follow the Makeup Lovers. It's a group where they have like um, their online little online classes and they have classes with James Vincent and other professionals. And I like James Vincent because when I did a class with him back in November, it was so interesting because he said something and I never put two and two together. Like his way of doing makeup is to prep the skin before you put it on. And that makes sense. You want a clean canvas. So, you know, you get the face nice and clean, you prep it with products, you make it nice and healthy. And that way you'll apply the makeup better and with ease. And that was really um, interesting. I never really thought of it like that and his story was really cool. He was a social worker. He worked with people who had HIV, it was helping them. And then you, you get burnout. When you're in that um, field for a while, it wears on you emotionally. And then he didn't know what he wanted to do and he said, well, I want to be a makeup artist. Such an incredible story. You have to hear him tell it, do a class with him if you get the opportunity. Um, in person is amazing, but if you can't um, go in person, go online. A lot of great ways to learn from him and I've learned so much. Um, also know that you can make your own makeup line. Some successful artists out there like Kat Von D, she made her own makeup line and it's all vegan. Uh, some people want vegan products that are cruelty free, not tested on animals. And that's an important thing to know if you work with clients that are mostly vegan or you know younger people that are conscious of the environment or what's in the product, always carry uh, more than one line. And don't be afraid to mix um, certain things. So some brands are known for like, you know, their lipsticks, others are known for their foundation, others are known for their cover-up. Um, Poppy King, she makes lipsticks from Britain. She's really famous for that. Also check out Mayfair England. That's where a lot of makeup really got um, well-known. They have stores, um, British Path is a website and they have like a whole thing on the history of makeup and hair. It's, it's just incredible. Cause they almost like kick our butts in that in some ways. So know that the application of makeup is gonna be very different for each client. Maybe your client wants to look a little fun flirty. Maybe they just want something conservative. Sometimes a client just wants something to cover up um, blemishes and stuff. Typically, if you're doing makeup for men for editorials, you're just gonna be focused on making the skin tone look even. So you'll be using a BB cream, a CC cream, um, maybe a little foundation, some highlighter, and that's about it. But for women, usually you want like something more fashionable, some interesting color, something that will push the envelope without making an explosion. Because typically you don't wanna go over the top and do this dramatic runway look for a TV host or a celebrity that's on the carpet, depending on the event. If you have a bride, you don't want your bride going out there with crazy makeup because that might not be what she wants. So we have a whole bunch of cosmetics to use in the makeup realm. And I always say, take a little field trip, go to your friend with the mall, uh, go with a friend to a mall, hang out at the mall for a little bit and really get the chance to look at the makeup counter, see what's out there, see how they apply it, kind of learn from them. Having someone apply your own makeup is a great way to learn about it because the way they apply it, you'll understand it better. It's kind of like when we do hair or skin services, we apply it on each other and then we um, have it applied to ourselves. And that way we're able to really learn everything. So, um, 
We're gonna go over some of the cosmetics in this video segment, and if I have time, um, we might be able to go into some of the tools. But typically, um, we're gonna start with foundation. Foundation is gonna be known as your base makeup. This is a tinted cosmetic used to cover or even out the coloring of the skin. You can use this to cover dark spots, blemishes, and each um, foundation will have its own level of um, intensity. Some are very thick, others are very thin and more translucent. You also wanna make sure you're aware of what a primer is. So what a primer is, think of like painting a wall. If you're painting a wall, you're gonna use a primer. You want everything even. A silicone-based product is a skin primer, and these are products that are used after cleansing and moisturizing the skin or as a moisturizer. Skin primers are applied before any type of colored foundation is applied to fill in lines, gaps, or other uneven surfaces of the skin, providing a smoother skin surface on which traditional makeup is applied. So when you put the primer on, it's gonna go in there and it's gonna fill those gaps. So if your client has some wrinkles, that way that when you apply the makeup, it's not gonna make them look drab and dried out and kind of like old and wrinkled. It will make everything go on nice and even. So you can have, um, Oh, typically too, when you're doing um, makeup or priming the skin, you'll do your primer and your foundation. Um, whichever one you choose, if you do both, you always want to do your foundation before you apply any other makeup because if you don't apply your foundation, everything else is going to be a pain in the butt to apply and it'll look really messy. So always do a foundation, make it look even. Um, there's a new trend with um, foundation and that's the mineral powder makeup. It's a powdered form of foundation. You can have um, liquid foundation, stick foundation, and cream forms. So another thing too that I learned from um, learned from with James Vincent is that I always thought makeup was this magical thing and this and that, and he totally like got rid of that. He demystified it, which is important. Know that makeup can come in three different mediums, liquid, cream, powder. Those three, if you really think about it, there's lip tint that's um, liquid, there's lipstick, which is essentially a solid form. Uh, eyeshadow can be liquid, cream, or powder. So many ways um, to make makeup. It's really whatever medium you're comfortable of working with and what you're used to. So um, before you apply it, you can do a special type of foundation called a colored primer, and this is applied to the skin before foundation to cancel out and help disguise skin discoloration. Color primers are available in a variety of colors, green, lavender, amber, and sometimes other colors. Typically, what you'll do is you'll use the um, color to tone out what you don't want. So for example, when we learn hair color, if we have red, we wanna use green to cancel it. In skincare or makeup, you wanna cancel out the red by using a green um, primer. Lavender is used to reduce a, sw a swallow or sallow yellowish skin appearance, and amber primer helps cover dark purplish colors such as bruising or dark eye circles. So typically um, there's some foundation chemistry you want to know. Um, most liquid and cream forms of makeup contain a base mixture of water and oil, spreading agents that contain a significant amount of talc and various color agents called pigments. This is important for a state board. Color agents are going to be your pigments and pigments can be naturally derived from minerals or color agents called lakes. That lakes question was on my state board test and thank goodness I knew this chapter. Know that liquid foundations are also water-based foundations and they're mostly water but often contain an emollient such as mineral oil or silicone such as cyclomethicone. Some liquid foundations contain alcohols or other drying agents to help product dry quickly on the skin and set. The mixture of water and oil helps in applying the makeup color agents evenly and keeps the color suspended evenly throughout the product. So the reason being is if they weren't suspended, you have to constantly shake them. Some brands you do have to shake. Water-based foundation is most often used for lighter coverage needs and for oily to combination skin types. Because if it's water-based, you don't want to add more oil to oily skin or you'll cause some more comedomes and clog those pores. Water-based foundations dry quickly and produce a matte finish, meaning they dry to become non-shiny. Um, matte finish is something that is um, a trend, and remember, all this is based on trend, so sometimes you want matte hair color, matte makeup, and that they go hand in hand, right? So typically when you have a matte finish, it's going to be very dry and very um, bland, and this is where you have to be really tasteful, because if you have something that's too matte, your client will look like they're washed out and like a ghost. You want to add a little bit of a shine or shimmer oil to give it a little bit of life, or put the shine where you want it. Know that some foundations are marketed as oil-free. Um, these are intended for oily skin because if there is no oil, you run the, you don't run the risk of having comedomes. But some of these products may contain oil substitutes that can actually make them as oily as foundation that contains oil. You want to read and check to make sure the manufacturer says it's used for acne-prone um, skin. Also know um, another word that you want to look for is um, non-comedogenic, which means it will not produce comedomes. If you see something that's called comedogenic, 
it means they produce um, comedomes and you wanna avoid that. So non meaning no comedomes, non comedogenic means that the product is safe for acne prone skin. So you also wanna know that cream foundation is also known as oil based foundation and it's considerably thicker product that is often sold in a jar or in a tin. It may or may not contain water. The thicker the product, the less likely it is to contain water. Cream foundations provide heavy cover heavier coverage and are usually intended for dry skin types. They tend to produce a shinier appearance than water-based products. Know if you use a cream foundation on oily or acne skin, it may cause more clogged pores to form. All types of foundations can contain sunscreen ingredients, so that way you don't have to add sunscreen on top of your makeup, so you're getting like a benefit of um, you know, having a built-in sunscreen. So um, know that you wanna to try to match the foundation as natural as possible. To choose the correct foundation color, you wanna have the client sit in a well-lit area. Apply a small amount of foundation around the jawline. It is important that the color matches the skin on both the face and neck. If the color of the foundation is too light, it will look dull and chalky. If the color is too dark, it will look muddy or splotchy and the client's face will look dirty. Know that you want to blend the makeup onto the skin with a disposable makeup sponge. We're not going to be using um, sponges and then reusing them again. That's really gross. Typically, you can actually take a makeup blender and then give it to the client to take home. Um, know that you can also place the foundation in a small palette or plastic cup or a little um, area. Some of them have little disposable things you can put your makeups on and then you'll, once you pick them for the client, apply. There's many different ways. Um, also know that a line of demarcation is an obvious line where the foundation stops or starts. This is not, um, this is very unattractive. It's not something you want. So if you have a line of demarcation, like let's say you choose a foundation that's really nice, but it's a little bit lighter. You have a nice line like this. It'll show their natural skin in this and it looks like they're wearing a, like, a painted face. So you want to blend it in there. Um, also know that um, cream foundation is usually applied to a sponge and blended. Liquid foundation is applied to the skin in small dots and then you blend it quickly with a sponge. Um, mineral powder foundation is applied with a large fluffy brush called the kabuki brush. Uh, mineral powder contains a lot of pigments for coverage and these pigments stick to the skin providing a natural looking coverage. So powder is gonna be your more natural option but the liquid one will provide you some more coverage and then the thickest is a cream foundation and that's for it covering extreme pigmentation or blemishes but it also may be um, unnatural looking if you don't blend it correctly. Um, know that concealers are a thick, heavy type of foundation used to hide dark eye circles, dark splotches, and other imperfections. They contain more talc or pigment for heavier coverage. They are also available in a wide range of colors and should match the skin very closely. If the color is not matched perfectly, the concealer may draw attention to the area instead of hiding it. Concealers can be packed in tins, jars, or tubes at once. Some concealers contain product ingredients to add moisture or control oil, and some concealers contain anti-acne ingredients to be used on acne blemishes, so it's a two for one deal. Always know it's in your product. If you have a client that has a breakout, you can put the concealer on first usually and then put the um, foundation over it. I've done both like Strix for men. You have the concealer tool that you use, it's a stick. Tap it on and then you put your um, tinted moisturizer on, rub it and that blends everything in. So also know, here's a little tip, that concealer may be worn alone without foundation. If chosen a blended correct, if chosen a blended correctly, if chosen and blended correctly, you can wear it alone. Be sure to um, use it sparingly and soften the edges so the complexion looks clear and even rather than heavy makeup application. Um, face powder. Face powder is a cosmetic powder, sometimes tinted or scented, that is added to use a matte or nine shiny finish to the face. It helps to absorb excess oil and minimizes the shine of oily skin. It is used to set the foundation, making it easier to apply other face powders such as blush. Know that face powder comes in two forms, loose and pressed. Press powder is blended with binding agents to keep it in a caked form in the tin. Loose powder does not contain as much binder and comes in a jar. Both powders are usually a mixture of talc or cornstarch with color pigments added. Some powders do not contain much color and are called translucent, meaning you can kind of see through them. They are intended not to add color when applied over the foundation. Pressing agents or binders such as zinc um, stetrate are added to press the foundation to help it adhere to the skin. If a colored powder is used, it should match the natural skin. And in order to apply powder, you're gonna apply it with a brush and there's different ways to apply. Um, you can do it with touch-ups too. Know that cheek color is also called blush or rouge. It is add, used to add a little bit of a natural looking glow to the face. It could be used um, to add extra color in and cheek color comes in powder, gel, and cream form. 
Makeup artists have traditionally used cream forms of cheek color, however powder blushes are easier to use and are much more popular for retailing. No to that, this is where retail is important. Makeup is a really good selling point and it doesn't always seem like that. Some retailing cosmetics, um, you'll able to get a five to 10% on commission for every product you retail. So if you're able to retail to each client multiple cosmetics, that money will quickly add up. This book claims that if you retail correctly, you can pay for a week long vacation, a weekend long vacation, or make a car payment. And that's true if you're able to sell a high end brand and you're able to get um, a constant level of sales. Although I, I do want to add a note saying that a majority of makeup now is being done online. So people are able to look at their skin online, they'll get a face mapping, they'll send them a little kit and they'll have to answer some questions on their phone. It's really cool technology and it's really modern. And what that does is it um, gets them a subscribe and save. So you always want to be creative on how you're selling your product. There's all kinds of marketing that goes into this, a lot of graphic design that goes into this. It's really interesting. Um, so when you're using a powdered blush, um, you always want to make sure you um, look carefully and you don't want to apply the brush in a circle on the apple of the cheek beyond the corner of the eye or inward um, because that will look unnatural but again makeup is so subjective subjective if you're doing it for maybe an editorial like a before and then after then you want to purposely break the rules again this is personal preference there's a lot of great youtubers that do makeup my friend Madison um, is a great um, makeup artist look her up on sentient faces on Instagram she's incredible and she is more than happy to help with any makeup questions I always tell her she should be an educator because she knows her stuff and her work is incredible. She can do really natural, she can do bridal, she can do theater, she can do editorial, and she can do special effects. Um, so, and my other friend too, Jade, is a really good makeup artist at Zanya Salon. What I'll do here is I will break here um, and we come back, we're gonna talk about lip color, eyeshadow, eyeliners, eyebrow color, mascara, and other cosmetics if we have time.